Welcome to Kentuckiana Real Talk, hosted by Jeremy Ward. If you enjoy the podcast, please subscribe on the podcast provider of your choice and consider subscribing to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel for more expert real estate insights. Now, let's start the show. Hello, it's Jeremy Ward with Ward Realty Services. Today, I have the opportunity to interview a good friend and an awesome lender, Chris Squires, with Interlink Mortgage. Chris, what you been up to, man? Man, just uh, same old, same old, working hard. You know, Always working. Slinging loans is what we call it, you know, <laughs> trying to get people pre-approved and into new homes. So, well, believe it or not, there's still a lot of real estate sales going on right now. I tell you, we've been, um, our our conversion is about the same as it has been. Our leads are about the same that they mm-hmm. have been. So not much has fallen off. And um, it, it comes down, what I believe is, from the sales side, from real estate agents, from loan officers, it's it's the perspective of mindset, right? Yes, absolutely. So you see a lot of the newer agents, like Brooke is a perfect example mm-hmm. on your team. She's she's pretty new. I mean, she's been doing it, I'm not sure exactly how long. It's going on a year now. A year? Mm-hmm. So that's very new. Very, yeah. Very so new she doesn't rookie. have like the perception of how easy it was three years ago, right? Mm-hmm. And, and so she's grinding a little harder. So um gene our ceo says things he's been saying it for 10 years i've been there he, he says uh uh people our markets don't make people people don't make, make markets, markets right so and people always talk about you know the the idea of um i'm doing so bad because the market's so bad well yeah so that's that's a definitely a pessimistic view of it right, right. but all you're seeing is if the market has shrunk and you if think of the market as a big pie, right? right? The pie has been huge for a long time. And there's been, to be honest, too many real estate agents and too many loan officers. I mean, people are coming in the business left and right. Very saturated. Yeah. So you had a little sliver of this huge pie of the market, right? And so the market has shrunk. That's easy. You can see that on numbers of mm-hmm. listings and, and buyers or whatever, right? So all you have the people like Brooke and like a lot of people on our team, they don't buy into that philosophy that we're going to just do bad right now because the market's bad. All they do is get a much bigger piece of that smaller pie. Yeah. And that's what you're seeing a lot of agents, you know, good agents that are doing right now. And that's going to even be better because when the market expands again, their piece of the pie is that much Huge. bigger. And that's when they just crush it. So, you know, I don't, I don't go down that path when people try to talk about how bad the market is, because I believe that philosophy is that, you know, it's whatever you say it is, the markets don't make you No, there's still a lot of people buying houses. There's still a lot of houses for sale. It's just a matter of, of doing certain things, working hard and just grinding it out during it is, it is way tougher now than it was three or four years ago Mm -hmm. in your business and my business, but it's, those times in that market was just something maybe once in a lifetime that we'll ever see. We maybe never will see again because the market we're in now is the same market we were in 20 years ago when I started this business. Well, it's the same thing when that when that COVID market hit mm-hmm. us. Everybody was freaking out. The sky's crashing. Well, what actually happened oh, yeah. is we, I know. you know, off the record sales. Yeah. And we turned something bad into something good. Yeah. People was able to take advantage of those rates and buy those homes. It's just changed. The rates have changed. Really, nothing else has changed. We're still short inventory. Mm-hmm. That's our biggest problem. It's not the rates. It's the we don't have a whole lot to sell because yep. people are pulling back and sitting on the, on the sidelines because of the the rate. But the rates the rates not a fixed item. It's changeable. You can refi. Well, that's the whole thing. A lot of people think thirty year fix that you have to keep that for thirty years. It's not even close. That's just amortization. Yeah. Right. So that seven and a half that you're getting now that you're buying the house for 400 grand for, right? Mm-hmm. You refinance that hopefully in two years, let's say five and a half, which five and a half is honestly a great rate. It's a great rate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the 2.5s are just not existent. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. You just never will see that probably again. But the five and a half percent is a fantastic rate. To be honest, seven and a half isn't really terrible like people think it is. My first house was eight and a half percent. Oh, yeah. I had perfect credit and great oh, income. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But that five and a half percent that everyone's waiting for, they're going to go buy it when, when we, let's say we get there in a year or two, inflation's back down and they, you know, the Fed lowers rates and we're back down to five and a half percent. That $400,000 in the house now is going for four seventy five. 
in two or years five. from now or 500. Yeah. Yeah. So they want to finance their money over now 475 or 500. They got to put an extra 75, 100,000 down to get the same equity that you got, but they're financing at five and a half percent. Guess what? Their payment's more than what it was. It was if they'd have bought If now. they would have bought at seven and a half. And all they're doing is refinancing into your magic five and a half percent that you've been waiting for. It's just that you paid more for the house. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I go to auction every so often. The deals you get is when there's not a lot of people there to bid. That's right. And that's and, and that's yeah. exactly what the people out there buying right now yeah. are facing less competition because sure. the rates are a little higher. Yeah. And like to your point, when the rates go down, everybody and their brother's oh, gonna yeah. flood the market. And what happens when rates go down? Home prices go up. Oh, yeah. And Thank there's you. more competition. So right. yeah, like now's the time. Like, yeah, you're going to take a little higher rate than you had last year. Yep. But if you get with the right lender who can set you up, get something affordable, or qualify you for that payment. And then once you got the house locked in at today's price, mm-hmm. look for a better rate down the road. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have, we're, we've seen seller or buyers leverage sellers for, for buy downs, for closing costs. Yeah. I mean, something you never saw two or three that. If you went in two or three years ago and they said, hey, we want to ask, uh, we'll give them full price, but we want 3% seller concessions and um, and we want them to uh, take a contingency while we sell. No. Nope. You wouldn't even submit the offer, would you? They, they'd laugh at you. Yeah, they'd laugh at you. You know, so, but now you can do that. Now we're, they're like, hey, get that offer over. We'd love to take a look at it. We're, set, <laughs> we're, we're getting contingencies. You know, we're seeing contingencies, first rights done. You know, we're seeing a lot of seller pay closing mm-hmm. costs that people are buying their rate down, either permanently or temporarily. And it's just a temporary buy down is still a, a go-to product we've had for years. It's just rates have been so low, we never needed it. Right. So, you know, they've taken their seven and a half down to five and a half for a year. And, you know, hopefully a year or two, we don't know when. And I always tell people like, listen, don't assume rates are going to five and a half in two years. Right. We don't know. We don't know. So you need to bank on that. This is it for right now. This is worst case. Right, worst us. case, permanently 30 year fix. This is what you, you feel comfortable. You don't want to gamble and say, I'm I'm overextending myself because rates are going to be five and a half right. next year. However, the you know, a lot of really smart economists have said that the Fed's going to have to lower eventually. Well, yeah. And, and so, you know, right now they've They've said they're, they've stopped. Now, there's still speculation they might raise again, but eventually we're going to get to a point, whether it's a year, two, three, four years, five years, it doesn't matter, that they're going to have to lower it back down, right? But, you know, it's it's still a great time to buy. There's yeah. still a lot of buyers. Our pipeline's still full of people buying homes. Um, we're seeing our, our average loan amount's probably down a little bit. People, That's the smaller only thing houses. that I'm seeing is like we're we're actually setting records in sales this year yeah. above and beyond COVID. Yeah. But the sales prices are mm-hmm. kind of coming down. Yep. You our know? units are the same though. And mm-hmm. my measuring stick has always been units. Like I focus yeah. on unit driven. Yep. That's how I that's how I create my conversions from application all the way to closings to kind of manage where we need to kind of spend some time, some money, how we do our conversion to get the outcome we want on units. And the market will dictate the amount, right? So I just, <clears throat> from from how good we're doing, our measuring stick is units, yeah. you know? And then the market will dictate the prices. And But we're seeing that go down a little bit. We're seeing, we're, we're, we're lending the same amount of units, if not a little more, just we're lending a little less money. Gotcha. So, yeah, and that's what I see. Basically, I was looking at our year-over-year year mm-hmm. numbers because, you know, as an agent, we all look at, oh, my God, I'm, I feel slow. I feel right. slow. And then you look back year-over-year. Year, I think I was looking yesterday for the team. We had 49 pending deals mm-hmm. still for the month. Right. And I was like, oh, that's a little low. We've been up around 60, 65. Of course, we're coming out of summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I look back at last year this time. Last year at this time, we were like 37 units. Yeah. And I'm like, well, 40. And the, and the volume was like 7 million compared mm-hmm. to like uh, – it was like 37 deals at seven and a half million. And now right now it's like 49 deals at 11 million. So there again, it was mindset. Right. I felt like I was a little slow possibly. Yeah. Then I looked at the numbers. Heck, we're, we're kicking tail. Like we're doing better than we did last year. Yeah. And last year was a, a really good year. And that's hopefully you're, that's what you're, you're the message you're giving to your team because that yes. misery, listen, misery loves company. Absolutely. And so when people buy into this, the sky is falling misery. All it does is to get all these sheep along with it that want to join in. Well, right? that's, that's why I tell people, you know, I don't care what agent you use. Mm-hmm. 
But get with your lenders. Get with an agent and oh, actually yeah. find some facts. Because yeah. what they're telling you on the news is national. It, it probably don't pertain to southern Indiana, Kentucky, Anna's market. Oh. Like, we're in one of the top three markets in the United States yeah. right now. And we don't have any supply. Right. So, the you know, the sellers are still in control. Yeah. But they are working with the buyers more. Mm-hmm. Because the buyers are having a little harder time getting the money. Oh, yeah. That's but, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's still, uh, it's a great market, oh, you yeah. know, and I, I correct people all the time. They talk, you know, was in a board meeting today, and they're talking about, you know, this market being rough, and I'm sitting there going, you just got to work harder. Well, that's the we're, we're going back to the 2010, yeah. 11, 12, 15 market where you actually went out and procured business. Yep. It wasn't falling out of the sky, and that's the what's unfair to the new agents, kind of yep. like you were saying. They don't know any different. Yep. So, Brooke, for example, she's out here grinding. That's crushing all it. she knows. Crushing it. Too. Crushing it. Doing yep. an awesome job. Yep. But she didn't have that other market that just where things were falling out of the sky to compare to. Yep. And I think I tell people all the time, you know, you're running down the interstate and you're running 100 mile an hour, right? Oh, there's a there's a, there's a a police officer up ahead. I got to slow down to 60. Mm-hmm. Now I feel like I'm crawling. Well, I'm yeah. still breaking the speed limit. Right. I'm still going fast. I'm just not going as fast as I was. And I feel like that's what we're seeing. Like it's not a bad market. We were going 100 mile an hour. Now we're doing 70. It's really we're we're not slow, right? And you just gotta you gotta grind. You gotta do things different than what you were doing before. When mm-hmm. the business, it's, it's order taking. It was order taking during COVID. Mm-hmm. Now it's more the relationship business. It's re, it's relate. It's it's a relationship business. It's doing things to create. You know, make your show your better service that you're mm-hmm. providing. Add providing value. adding value, being having that wow factor experience to where like man, everyone just took such good care of us from the realtor side to the lender side. It's just creating a great experience for people, right? And then, especially in Southern Indiana, because the cost of living over here is it's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> I mean, it really is. And what you can get, I mean, Kentucky is great too. Sure. But Harrison County, Cordon, these taxes here. It's awesome. <laughs> with the homestead exemptions. Yes. I mean, I grew up, I mean, I've lived in Kentucky for 20 some years. My wife's lived there her whole entire life. I mean, I would consider moving over here easily if my wife would, if it was just because of your property taxes. Right. Sign me up in Harrison County. Yes. You know. A big break. A huge break. So the cost of living, when you see all these big apartment complexes going up, especially in town and stuff, and they're charging $2,000, $2,500 a month in rent for a two or three bedroom, and you, you but you're complaining about a 7.5% rate, you're paying someone else. I mean, you're, you're all paying their money, mortgage already. And all that money is just lost. Yeah, it's just lost. And well, and it, 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 these investors are not getting the seven and a half, eight percent rate. They're paying, paying even higher rates. Oh yeah, and they're still building. So, kind of the smart money's building and buying oh, yeah. and going. You kind of need to no get doubt. on that train. And there's no excuse for people to say that. You know, I can't buy. Don't assume that because you'll be surprised. And there is a misconception out there that I talk to people all the time that they have to have twenty percent down to, to buy a house. Not even they need zero down. And guess what? A lot of times we do we do loans for all the all a lot of buy, buyers. When they go to closing table, they bring zero dollars to close, and they get their earnest money back to them at closing. Happens yeah. all the time. Yeah. And then they don't have a mortgage payment for two months. Right. They got their credits, and the, and the, and they got a, t- a chance to they recoup. Got the, they got their seller pay <laughs> closing costs, hundred percent financing. Um, they get their tax proration credit from the, especially in Indiana, on the on the from the for the taxes. Mm-hmm. And there's, we set up their escrow account. Their payment is sixteen hundred dollars on a nice house instead of twenty two hundred dollars. And they own the house. They get one to three percent appreciation minimum in a right. minimum, usually a lot more. But you know, historically, our market's never depreciated. You know, well, and I don't think people look at you know they look at that payment even even if they're going to rent it someday. Mm-hmm. They go, okay, I'm a my payment's fourteen hundred. I can rent it for sixteen hundred. I'm gonna make two hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. No, you're making a lot more than that. You're not considering the equity oh. and the appreciation of the property over here is what you really want to be focused on. Yeah, the, I mean the appreciation. You're having so you're you're gaining maybe two hundred dollars cash flow, right? Mm-hmm. The long term net worth, you're, you're gaining huge. a lot over time. Plus, you're just thinking your payments just a wash. I mean, there's a small principal amount there getting paid down. Mm-hmm. So you multiply that over and over and over. Compounded interest, compounded savings. Yes. Right. Month over month, year over year, adds up to a ton of money. It's huge. A ton of money. Well, and like you were saying earlier in this market, the sellers are willing to work with the buyers right. now. Like, I know you have a buy-down program that yeah. we can ask for the sellers to throw in some money. Talk about that a little bit, Chris. Like, I see that, you know, that's 
depending on how you mm-hmm. do it, that's a huge savings over years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you have it, especially in the 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 smaller properties are moving faster. Yeah. You know, the larger properties, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars, they slow down a little bit just because the cost of of getting the money is a lot mm-hmm. less. So those you have some more leverage with the seller typically Absolutely. to be able to get some concessions. So if you have a five hundred thousand dollar house and the seller is getting ready to drop it. You know, let's say 10 grand, 15 grand, 275 or 475, whatever. It doesn't matter, right? They're lower than 15 grand. So, what you are seeing those price drops that we haven't seen a you're, little too quickly. Yeah, you're seeing them now, right? Yes. The, the, the big hurdle on the roadblock that we're seeing with buyers is not the price, it's the payment. It's the payment. It's yeah. not the price. I mean, they're like, if I want a $1,000 house, I like that. I love this house. I mean, this amazing house. Going from 490. From five hundred to four ninety is uh, it's just not a it's not a it doesn't have any 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 traction it doesn't give it doesn't give you any feel good like right. whatever so if we can get that seller to say hey listen we'll sell it to you at five hundred thousand dollars but we're going to give you fifteen thousand dollars as a subsidy and what we're going to do is we're going to lower your rate you know three three per, we can do unconventional we can do three percent the first year so if we lock them at seven and a half right. We can do a four and a half percent for the first twelve months, then then two percent reduction the second year, so that's five and a half percent, and then six percent, six and a half percent, and one percent reduction the third year. Mm-hmm. Seller gets what they want; they have the four four eighty five, yeah, which they were going to reduce to anyway, and ruin the market. Yeah, drive it's, comps down exactly. exactly what you don't want to do in your neighborhood. Exactly, so they get the four eighty five at the table that they wanted. The seller paid five hundred, or buyer paid five hundred thousand for the house, but they have this subsidy now, so they have a, a little separate account with fifteen G's in it. That every single month they're paying the seven and a half, but they only pay four and a half. We take a little money each month out of this subsidy, right. and so the 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 buyers reaping the reward and getting that payment to where they they have where they were three years ago, yep. right? And by then. Rates are going to be changed. Hopefully, you know we <laughs> yeah. go in still worst case scenario. It's that it, you don't don't bank on it, but right. there's a good chance. And let's say a year from now, five and a half percent comes back. That subsidy you've only used six grand of it, so there's still nine grand left in the subsidy. That is a straight principal reduction off your payoff, so you wow. don't lose the money. You're getting it. On you're getting principal. It. You're getting it. So then it's just really equity cash in hand that the seller gave you. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's a uh, it's helped. Got a, we we've got a lot of deals done from it. Um, we have a calculator that I can send over a screenshot to you. It shows exactly how it breaks down. You know, yearly, uh, monthly, and yearly of how much it is per month and how much that equates to over a year. Um, the seller's happy. You're happy. It gets a deal done, and it it puts people. Every, everyone's happy. It's absolutely. I'm a big believer in buy down. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like you. Like yeah, you can. Knock ten off the price, and okay, I got it from five hundred to four ninety. Yeah, if I can rock these rates down and knock them down, I might save over the life of the loan, depending yeah. on what type of package. Two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars over thirty yeah. years. So the interest rate buy down yeah. in my book is obviously the best way to go. Well, on top of that, like if you're running a house, like what I'm seeing happen right now, other than rather than offering programs like you're talking about, people are just reducing these prices. Mm-hmm. We're shooting ourselves in the foot. Yeah, all the sellers are getting shot in the foot because now this house sold in this neighborhood for probably twenty thousand dollars less than it should have because somebody was in a hurry. Mm-hmm. Uh, now you've just reduced everybody's equity by twenty thousand yeah. dollars in neighborhood. Where if they'd done the buy uh, buy down, the price would have stayed the same. The buyer would have got a really good deal on their loan, and the seller walks away happy, and nobody in the neighborhoods had their home prices driven down yeah. by somebody reducing and dumping. All right. So, I mean, it's just good for the market. It, it's the same thing as, you know, builders. When we build houses, we can't really reduce the sales price because the next one we build, we got to reduce it down to that point. Next thing you know, we don't have money to build it. Yeah. Uh, so, we always keep the sales price the same and try to do incentives or add a refrigerator, even in a normal market. Right. Uh, so, there's just a lot to think about uh, as a buyer and, and thinking long term, you know, Especially if you're thinking, I'm going to move in this neighborhood I want to be in. I'm going to start with a starter home. Then, I, then I'm going to move up. Well, you definitely want to, don't want to be going in there slashing prices yeah. because you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Exactly right. I so, mean, and, and, you know, if you, from a consumer standpoint, if you feel like you're buying a $500,000 house you get for four eighty five, okay, that makes you feel good. But if your payment goes from 3500 to 2600 You a feel month, real good. <laughs> with $900 a month cash flow, you're like, whoa, whoa, I like that a lot. Yeah. You what know? can you do with that 900 
Oh yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. So no, I think that's something that you know we did back in the day a little bit, um, and like you said, we haven't seen it in three or four years because the rates are just yeah. been so low. But now it's time that it's a market where you got to think, you got to problem solve, and you got to grind a little bit. Uh, but there's plenty of business. There's plenty of buyers there out is. there. Uh, I would like to see more sellers. If yep. anything, I would love for the government to uh, incentivize maybe the builder because mm-hmm. uh, we need the inventory. Now, right now, I think about 35% of our market is new construction mm-hmm. yep. um, just because the homes aren't out there. Yep. But, you know, we, we've got some of the largest, uh, we've got the millennials and the baby boomers, the two largest population yep. groups are still, you know, around and needing housing. Yep. There's just not enough houses. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, I would inventory. love to see some incentives for the builders to be yeah. able to get more housing on the ground for us. Yeah, inventory would, would be very helpful right now, for sure. It, it would relax the sales prices a little bit. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's really what we need. Right. Uh, even with even if the interest rates stayed the way they were, if we could just get some more inventory, some more options for yeah. people. That's right. So. It's, well, a, it's a great market, though. I mean, instead of telling people, like, don't don't just assume that this is not the time to buy for you. Right. Don't, don't, don't do that. Assume I tell my 16 year old all the time, quit assuming anything, right? Yes. If you assume you're probably going to get it wrong, mm-hmm. it might not be the time for you, but it might be the time for you. It, and it and if, if you don't talk to the right people, you don't know the facts, right? I know your people and, and me and our team, we're not here to hard sell anyone. Like I've, I've told people honestly before that, hey, this is not the time for it's you not right your now. Time. It's, it's yeah. not your time. Here's what you need to do to make it your time. But don't assume that it's not your time without without talking to a professional, you know, of, of getting the facts of, of what is out there. And you might be really surprised with stuff, you know. So well, and there's no application. Like if you talk to me, right. there's no cost. Yeah. Like I'm going to pull your credit. I eat, That cost is on me. I'm going to run a credit simulator if we need to, to try to figure out if we can improve your credit. That cost is on me. I want to give you my professional advice that I've been, you know, over 22 years in the business. I know how to, how to do this business. Absolutely. It's really all I know. <laughs> right. I don't know what I'd do without <laughs> I it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what, what I would do outside this position, this kind of job. I don't know what I would do because this is really all I know, but I am an expert in this, Absolutely. in this position. I know what I'm talking about. All that I'm giving consultations all free. Yeah. You know, my, 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 what I earn is hopefully when you go to buy a house, you choose to use us. Right. Mm-hmm. And then at that time, you know, we'll, we'll do a loan for you. And that's, that's our reward at the end of the day. But, um, there's a lot that you can do that you might not think you can do with just talking to me. And I surprise people weekly. Yeah. Weekly. I talk to people and they're like, I had no idea. I've, I've seen it. You know, people call me and they're like, Hey, we're looking to rent. Mm-hmm. And my, usually my first question is, well, what makes you Why? think mm-hmm. that you want to rent? Well, I don't know. My credit, this, that, and other yeah. may or may not. I'm like, well, you don't know mm-hmm. for sure. And they're like, no. And I usually end up sending them to a lender, yeah. you or Andrew. And uh, they call back just amazed. They can buy a house. They can actually afford more than they thought they could. Oh, yeah. And I think it's the good thing about our business is it's not like you're walking on a lot where you're going to be, you know, they're going to close mm-hmm. the gate behind you until you buy something. Right. We're just a phone call. Yeah. Or just to, you know, get on the app, fill out the application. There's no pressure. No pressure. When you're ready, we're ready. Yep. Uh, and, and the thing is, it may be, you may be ready next week, but you may not be ready for a year. And that doesn't matter to us. Yep. Not it's sure. just keep working with us. We'll work with you. We're here when you yep. need us. And we're here to help you get there. Yep. So, I, talk, I talked to a young lady right before I came here and, and she wasn't ready. Financially, she wasn't ready. Uh, from her job, she wasn't ready. Her credit, she wasn't ready. I gave her, I gave her advice on every part of that, and she she said, "Chris, I'm going to do this." And I put a I put a follow up uh, in two months. We're going to follow up just check in with her, yeah, right. And I guarantee she does it. What I told her, and at that time she's she's going to be ready to rock and roll, and Isn't, she's going to get into a house. It is so it's like so rewarding when you give somebody advice yeah. and they're like, "Okay, I'm going to do this," and yeah. then they pop back up. A lot of times they do it quicker than you thought they would. Oh yeah. But it's just so nice to be able to give them that advice and see them work through that, and they, yeah. that light comes on for them. They're yeah. like, you know, I can do this. I'm gonna actually be have that American dream. I'm yeah. gonna own a home. Yeah, uh, we sold a house to a lady the other day, a uh, young girl. Mm-hmm. She'd saved and stuff, had plenty of money. We didn't ask. We didn't have to put any of it down, but 
you know, she was like nine, 18 and a half, mm-hmm. 19 years old and is already a homeowner. I yeah. was just amazed because I was 25 before I bought my first oh, home. Yeah. And they're really, I mean, it's an advantageous. Oh, yeah. I told her, I said, you are so smart. Like she had a, she had a stable job. Yep. I was like, taking that risk and doing that right now at this age, you're going to gain so much equity. Like mm-hmm. you're going to be able to buy and sell, buy and sell, and buy and sell, where a lot of us waited till we were 30. Mm-hmm. Well, there's, you know, 10, 15 years of equity we missed out on. Uh, uh, I wish I bought when I was 15. I know. We did. A, I did a loan for someone that their birthday was 2003. What were you doing in 2003? Mm-hmm. I know what I was doing in 2003. It, it probably wasn't, wasn't productive. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it, I guarantee it wasn't. I didn't know you then. I guarantee it wasn't. However, you know, I had to get verification of his job. And then we had to go back and get high school because he was so young in high <laughs> yeah. school. But the guy put 10% down. And I, I remember at the table, I was, looking, I was like, man. Good for you. Yeah. I go to get in, do what you're doing now at your age. You know, you're going to, you're setting yourself up for a, a very solid foundation of, of success because there's no better way of building long term net worth than through real estate, in my opinion. I think pretty much all wealth advisor would tell you that. Like they don't deny the fact that, that owning a home is probably the best first step. But you got to live, shelter, <laughs> shelter, and food, two things you have to have. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, shelter, you have to have it. So you're either building your own net worth through shelter or you're building someone else's. Right. Right. So build your own. And this kid, I mean, I I applauded him. I I was I told how impressed I was. Like, I know what I was doing at your age. It wasn't even close to being at a closing table. He, I applauded him. He was amazing. And I, I see this happening all the time now. I just want I want to talk to people. To to educate them and give them advice on how they can set that same foundation that kid set at such a young age because it in 10 years from now when he's when he's 29 mm-hmm. his net worth is going to be a, a, probably twice or three times his peer uh, it's probably more than that you but, know because yeah. so many people now choose to rent for such a long period of time the younger generation we see are just renting 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 and it's all in front of them with all these big new complexes there they're uh, posting up and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's impressive what he did. But I, I suggest everyone just talk, figure yeah. out, get information. That's your first step. Mm-hmm. Like, get a home lender. Yeah. Figure out what you're capable of and what you're comfortable with. Yeah. And then from there, you know, get your realtor a call and we'll go to work. Yeah. But yeah, there's so many people out there, I think, are just listening to whatever's on the evening news. Mm-hmm. And it really don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't agree with most of it. As far as real estate and housing, like I'm just not seeing it where we're at. I mean, I, that's what I. My biggest thing to people is like it's still a really good market, and you got some opportunity, like you were saying, to get in on some of these places while other people ain't looking. Yeah, because 100%. when they turn their head back to the market, the thing's going to get yeah. just crazy again. Yep. and they're, everybody's going to be fighting because there's not be, enough supply. They're going to be frustrated, and then they might end up. They're going to be paying what the market is going to going to dictate at that time but it's going to be overpaying of what you can purchase right now yeah i mean we went through a spell uh you know i was like you in the market in mm-hmm. 08 and i was one i'm like brooke that didn't know any different i didn't know what 05 looked like i didn't get into 06 yeah when everything was kind of slowing down mm-hmm. and i made you know some good good investments during that market when a lot of people were running away from it yep. uh, and i think that's kind of the story today is like you, you might be kicking yourself in the foot waiting, kicking yourself in the rear by waiting mm-hmm. because the ones that are taking advantage of us are going to be really good shape five, six, ten years from now. Yeah. So I'm still buying. Yeah. Not, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, the builders are still building. Oh, yeah. Like, it's it's not going to stop. Yeah. This is not 08. All right. Not even close. No, it's not, it's not even close because everyone we've been lending money to for many years now all have affordability. They can all afford it. So it's not it's not a it's not the same thing of what you saw in 08. Because those people were defaulting left and right yeah. because banks were giving them money that they couldn't pay back. Well, and the builders were overbuilding. Mm-hmm. I mean, we had inventory. I could go out in 08 and show you, uh, hey, you want to see new construction this weekend? I'll go show you 40 or 50 of right. them in your price range. Yep. And then probably go back out and do it again the next day. Yep. I can't find 40 houses to show all my buyers right now. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's right. just not there. So so bullet points, don't assume right. that you can't buy. Just talk to somebody. Yep. Talk to one of your agents. Talk to you. Talk to me. Talk to somebody on our team. Talk to anybody. But just get information and don't assume that you can't buy. And yep. don't assume that it's not the right time to buy. 
Right. We'll Get tell your facts. you. Yeah, we'll tell you if it is or is not. And, you know, we know what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Chris, what's a good way to get a hold of you if somebody's kind of curious to see where they where they land well, the housing market? Yeah, so you can call me direct on my cell phone. It's 502-548-1926. Um, our website is interlinklouisville.com. That's I-N-T-E-R-L-I-N-C. It's got a C it's there. It's a C, not a K. It's not a K. It's a C. <laughs> so interlinklouisville.com. And that brings you to our entire team that we have. And there's a lot of people there that are all awesome at what they yeah. do. You know, they're all awesome, just like your team. That's why we mesh well together. I think you got an awesome team. You bring you bring that good, hardworking culture to your team. Yeah. And I, I try to try to do the same thing. Absolutely. Of, of not buying in, you know, what I said, what the, the people don't make markets or markets don't make people, people make people markets, make market. you know, and, and Gene says that our CEO says that over and over again. And he and it is truthful statement it's 100 percent. it's all about mindset and what you're willing to do to get what you want that's right and if you if you want it bad enough you'll figure it out that's right and there's plenty of tools in your box to help them get there i yep. know that for a fact because i don't seem i don't think i've sent me me there hasn't been many people i've sent to that didn't end up with a house either now or later oh yeah you know like yeah. you work with them mm -hmm. so right. chris i appreciate you coming in and sharing your wealth of knowledge with us for more local real estate information Please like and subscribe to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel.